Hey guys, I'm excited about this video. We are going to do an example of each of these shapes finding their area, okay? Now down in the description, I will have linked a timestamp of when I do each of these. If you're like, oh, I only need a kite and a triangle. So you can just go down there and jump right to it. I'll also have videos linked that are more in depth examples of each one. If you're like, oh, I need a little more info. I have videos on all of these where I go more in depth if you need those. All right, but let's go ahead and get started. So we are going to start out with our good friend, the rectangle, okay? The area of a rectangle is base times height. So my base here is 28 yards and my height is 20 yards. So we're gonna go ahead and do 28 times 20, which gives me 560. Now with all of these, since we are doing area, we always need to pay attention to our units, so yards, but it's not just yards. When it's area, it's going to be yards squared, okay? The reason for that is if this was a room or something that was 20 yards by 28 yards, we're trying to figure out how many squares that are one yard by one yard would fit in there. So that's why it is yards squared. All right, there is my first one. All right, moving on to our square. The formula to find the area of a square is guess what? Actually the same thing, base times height. So we are going to say our area is 20 times 20, which gives me 400. And again, we are in yards since it's area yards squared. Not too bad. All right, next we are moving on to a parallelogram. Guess what, friends? It's actually the same equation. <laughs> the area of a parallelogram is base times height. One note to make is the height is from the bottom to the top where this makes a right angle. It's not the slanted one, okay? So make sure you are paying attention to that. But for this guy, we're going to say our area is equal to the base times the height. So 10 times 6, which gives me 60. In this one, we are in inches. And again, it's going to be inches squared. Okay, my next example is a triangle. And this one is similar, but it's not exactly the same. The area of a triangle is going to be half times the base times the height, okay? So my area here is going to be equal to half the base, so times 10, times the height, which is 11. Again, it's not this slanted measure. It's from the bottom to the top with a right angle, okay? When I multiply that, 1 half times 10 gives me 5. 5 times 11 gives me 55, and we are in inches, and because it's area squared. Oh my gosh, look at that. We already made it through four problems. Let's go ahead and pull our next guy down. Oh, but not that one yet. All right, next we are going to look at a rhombus. A rhombus is a special parallelogram, okay? So if you are given the base and the height of a rhombus, you can actually figure it out doing base times height. But if you aren't given that and you're given the diagonals, you can also figure it out, all right? So the area of a rhombus is half times the first diagonal times the second diagonal. I keep almost saying diameter. <laughs> If I say diameter, no, I mean diagonal, okay? So we are going to say that our area is equal to half times diagonal one, which is two inches plus two inches, so four inches, times diagonal two, which is three inches plus three inches, so six, and we are going to multiply those all together. So one half times four would give me two, two times six would give me 12. And we are in inches squared. 
All right, there we go. Okay, next we have the area of a kite, which guess what, guys? It's actually the same as the area of a rhombus. <laughs> so we're going to take half times the first diagonal times the second diagonal. So my area is going to be one half times my first diagonal. Now it doesn't really matter which one is first and second, um, but we'll go ahead and say this is diagonal one. So four plus nine would give me 13. Times my second diagonal, three plus three would give me six. All right, now one half times six would give me three. 13 times three would give me 39. We are in inches and inches squared. All right, now we're on to trapezoids, my favorite quadrilateral, maybe, I don't know. All right, the formula for a trapezoid is one half times the height times base one plus base two, okay? I wanna make a note on a lot of these, I have videos that explains why these are the equation. <laughs> if you're interested, I'll have those linked in the description like I was saying earlier, okay? All right, so the area of my trapezoid is going to be one half times the height, in this case is 10. And then we are multiplying that by base one plus base two, so 12 plus 16, okay? Now, first thing order of operations tells me to do is to add what's inside my parentheses. So we are going to have 12 plus 16, which gives me 28. And now we can just multiply this all together. So one half times 28 would give me 14, 14 times 10 would give me 140. And we are in feet and its area, so feet squared. Look at that. This is going faster than I thought it would. Okay, this is what we call a regular polygon, meaning all of these sides are the same length. Okay, this looks scary, but this is actually like one of the easiest one to, ones to find. So the area of a regular polygon is one half AP, all right? A stands for apothem, I think that's how you say it. That is from the center to the middle of one of the sides and it creates a right angle, as you can see here, that's A. And then P stands for the perimeter, so like if you're putting a fence around the outside. So we would go ahead and figure out how many sides this has. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it has 10 sides. Okay, we're gonna need that info in just a moment. So the area is one half times my apothem, which is 24. I'm gonna laugh if I find out I'm pronouncing that wrong, but there you go. Times my perimeter. So how am I gonna find the perimeter? Well, I know one of these sides is 16 feet. And this is a regular polygon. I know it doesn't say that, but if you were finding it, it would say something like, this is a regular polygon. So I know each of these sides is 16 feet. There are 10 of them. So 10 times 16 would give me 160 feet. That is the perimeter, okay? All right, now when I multiply these, I get that the area is equal to 1,920 feet squared. Look at that little guy. Okay. All right, we're gonna do two more. If you stuck around this long, you should buy yourself some ice cream or something. Okay, we are going to find the area of this circle. So the area of a circle is pi r squared. So I have all the information I need here. The area is equal to pi times my radius, which is 12 squared, okay? So my area ends up being 12 squared is 144 times pi. Now, occasionally 
Your teacher might want you to leave the answer like that. Because pi is an irrational number, we have to round at some point. So sometimes teachers just tell you, leave pi in the answer. So sometimes they might want it like that. If not, they'll probably tell you either to multiply by 3.14, round it there, or they might tell you to use the pi button on your calculator. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do 144 times pi, and then we're gonna round it to the nearest hundredth or um, the two places behind the decimal. So when I do that, I end up with 452.389, so that would round it up to 0.39, and we are in inches squared. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, but what if we only want a portion of the circle? We don't want to know the area of the whole thing. We just want to know a little part of it. Well, then we are going to use our formula for the area of a sector or section of a circle. So you'll see this here, this pi r squared. That's what we just did for the area of a circle. So we're finding the area of the whole circle, but then we're multiplying it by the part we want. So we're gonna take 45 degrees and put it over 360. That would be the whole thing. That'll tell me what fraction of the circle I want to know the area of, okay? So we are going to do area equals the degrees of the section that I want. So 45 over 360, that represents the whole circle, times pi r, which is 15 squared. All right, when I simplify 45 over 360, I end up with 1 eighth, okay? Times pi times 15 squared, which is 220. Okay, now when I multiply all of that together, I'm going to get 225 times pi, which gives me that. And then I'm going to multiply by 1 eighth, which is the same as dividing by 8. All right, so I end up with that my area is 88.357, so I'm going to round it to 88.36. And we are in inches squared. All right, look at all of those that we did. Oh my gosh. All right, I'll link a playlist with more detailed videos on all of those. And like I said, also check out the description if you need more info on any of these. Thanks.